purpose of this video is to install Raspbian Stretch Lite. So basically, I'm going to be doing a number of Raspberry Pi projects in the near future, and rather than show how to install Raspbian each time, I thought we would just do it once, and that would take care of it. And I could just refer back to this video to show you how to do the install on Raspbian Lite. So, if you go to the raspberrypi.org webpage and go to downloads, it shows you the two versions of Raspbian that are currently, as I make this video, available. The first one is Raspbian Stretch with desktop, and the second one is Raspbian Stretch Lite. Now, Raspbian Stretch Lite is a trimmed down version without the GUI, so you don't get the fancy windows, you just get command line. And what you would use that for is you would use it to do things that require more processing power or you just don't care because you're running a headless setup so you'll never have to see it. You do have to know a bit about how to operate in Linux because you're going to be typing everything rather than using a mouse and clicking on things. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up Raspbian Stretch Lite and I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're going to pull up our good buddy, Etcher. And I've made videos previously where I've talked about this. Etcher is what you use to image SD cards and such. So you can go to etcher.io and download the latest version. Uh, I don't know that I've used this one. I have used this one before, so I have turned off my... I don't want it to verify when it's done, and I, I don't care about it ejecting it. So. We're going to select our image. So we're going to go to our downloads folder and I've already downloaded Raspbian Stretch Lite. So you can see here it's about 357 meg. So it's not terribly big. So we'll go into that folder and we'll pick the IMG file, the disk image file. And basically this is a compressed copy of the disk. It's an image. That's why we're going to burn it to an SD card to make it work and we're going to pick our storage device USB device which I know for a fact is 32 gig just ignore this one it's a uh, file share that I have set up but just make sure you're picking the right device because if I pick this device instead of this one it's going to well it's not likely going to do that because it's not a physical device but it's going to overwrite all the information that you have on that disk with the image that you're putting to it. So the Raspbian image would be written over my file store, which would erase 12 terabytes of storage. We don't want to do that. So we're going to pick the 32 gig one. I verify, no, that's what it is. It's the only USB drive in my device. And I know I'm going on about this a little longer than I should, but taking two times to look at this is definitely better than regretting not having checked it and then you click flash and this does not take very long so we're going to flash the image to the drive and it partitions it it sets it up the way it should and it writes it all to the drive itself and as you can see it only takes about a minute it's not very long and i'm not going to time lapse it because a minute is not too long to sit here but what we can talk about is the differences between the two while we wait. So if you're a typical user and you want a Raspberry Pi that you're going to do things with, uh, say you're making a Pi Top laptop, uh, or you're making a desktop that you can work on, you would want to get the one with the desktop because obviously you want to be able to have icons, you want to have applications that you can run without having to type everything in, and you want things to be familiar. And the Raspbian Stretch with desktop is definitely familiar. Now, Raspbian Stretch Lite trims out the GUI, a few other things that you don't have to worry about because the displays don't have to display as much graphical images. So it runs faster, it runs better, it's more streamlined, it's more sleek, and it lets you get your jobs done as you can do things. Now, this next project I have coming up, I can't install anything other than the project because it's going to use that much of the processing power of the Raspberry Pi 3 that I'm setting up for this case. And this will be on a Raspberry Pi 3. I am going to have to reload the 3 Raspberry 3B Plus that I just got a hold of. 
because I basically using the same image that I was using on an old Raspberry Pi 3. I just haven't had time to set it up again because I don't want to go through all the steps. Don't necessarily have to do that, but I did notice some inconsistencies by just swapping the cards. There's another video in that entirely about how to migrate from one Raspberry Pi to another, but that is beyond the scope of this installation video. So now our flashing is done and we're ready to go. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to hook, I'm going to put the micro SD card in the Raspberry Pi 3 and I'm going to show you booting it up and we're going to view things from the Raspberry Pi 3's perspective. I need to do a little bit of setup so I'm going to pause the video but you won't notice the difference but just know that there were some other things that I had to do because I had to hook a keyboard up to it and a mouse and some other things and then I had to put it through my razor rip saw so that you could see what's going on but that's how we're going to do it we're going to set it up so that you're actually watching the Raspberry Pi boot up and I'm not actually getting to it after the first boot so you're going to see everything from beginning to when we're done so I'll be right back with that All right, so now that we are in our first boot, it's just gonna find where everything is and start up, and then we should be able to log in. There we go. I believe Login is Raspberry. I think I have that backwards. Yeah, I have that backwards. Okay, login is Pi. Password is Raspberry. All right, so now we are at the command line. And we need to run the configuration. So this is the Raspberry Pi software configuration tool that will allow us to do certain things. Now I'm using a 32 gig card here and it's not using nearly all of the 32 gig card. I do need more space than what it's giving me so I need to go into the advanced options and I do need to expand the file system. And it says it'll be enlarged the next reboot and that's what I wanted. Now here's where I would change the user password for the current user. So the Pi user needs a new password. If you leave it at the default, anyone who has access to your network can get into your Raspberry Pis if you do not change the password. Now I don't have a password to generate, but I'm still going to change the password. And it will not echo to the screen, so my password has been changed. And our network settings, we actually have this directly connected, but you can go into Wi-Fi and set up the Wi-Fi connection if that's available. You can change the names of the interfaces as well, but we need to change the host name on this particular device. Because we don't want it called Raspberry Pi. I have way too many Raspberry Pis on my network to remember what that particular one is. So we will call it, in this case, as an example, what it's going to be. Storage one, and that is now the name. Well, it will be after it reboots. Options for startup, we don't really need any of those. Don't need to worry about languages. I'm not going to go through the over tuning to take out all the additional languages and regional settings. I don't have any peripherals in this case. I'm not going to overclock, but updating is probably a good idea. So we will go ahead and update the tool, and it should be the latest version because we just downloaded it. And I don't think they change this that often. Although it is slightly different than the last time that I've set it up. So we're switching to the new version of Raspbian stretch. They did do a little bit of fiddling with where things are in the menu. Still can find them though, that's not a problem. 
Okay, and now we can tab down and go over to finish, and now we're out. Now the last thing that we're gonna do in this setup, and I don't always do this, but in this case, I need to make sure that everything is updated and upgraded. So we will do sudo apt get update, and then I'll go out and check to make sure everything is up to date. And sudo apt get upgrade. And that'll make sure everything that needs to be fixed is fixed. So this is actually a few things that it has to download in order to complete our installation. There's 10 packages that need to be upgraded. And some of these are actually ones that I'm going to be using. So we do need to upgrade them. And I could have just hit enter because Y is the default. So no matter what we hit, it's going to do it. And this is about as long as it's going to take to set up a Raspberry Pi device using Raspbian and Stretch Lite. Because after this, it's going to go into the specifics of whatever application you're going to use it for. But once it's done upgrading, it will be at the level where it can actually do whatever function you're going to ask for it to do. I don't even know why I hooked a mouse up to this. Because I certainly don't need one. This is all keyboard. Okay, and now we have the newest versions of every one of the packages that we probably are going to use. There we go. And it goes through this script where it adds a lot of different things to it. And you're just looking for things that are red. You don't want any red marks. And now it's going to upgrade the kernel from March 13th's kernel to March 28th's kernel. Which could be good and it could be bad. not going to speed through this because I do want you to understand about how long this process takes so that you're aware and you're not thinking yours is taking longer than it should. Now given if you're doing this on a Raspberry Pi 2 or something of that nature, it may take a little bit longer, but definitely not that much longer. And this is on a Raspberry Pi 3 with a class 10 SD card. And this is pretty much the normal process that it goes through. Unfortunately, everything's mostly in alphabetical order as it processes these, so you kind of have an idea of where you are from looking at it, because you know if you're in the S's, you're pretty close to being done. All right, and that is it. There are other things you can do, but this gets you through the basics, and this gets your system running. Beyond this, it's dependent on the task that you're going to do. And with that being said, I'm going to refer to this video to show you how to install Debian Stretch Lite on a Raspberry Pi rather than redoing this step every time because we're going to be doing a number of different projects with some of the Raspberry Pi 3's that I have sitting around here that are going inactive now that I'm replacing several of them with B pluses to get the gigabit Ethernet out of it uh, so that will give me some opportunity to do a few different projects those projects will relate back to this video to save time Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped show you how easy it is to install Debian on a Raspberry Pi and know that you can do it too and it's not an intimidating process. They make it seem like it's such a hacker's tool, it's such a, such a techie thing, 
but if you want a simple, easy to use device, this really is a good option and it's not terribly hard. Now I'm going to do another video later on setting up Raspbian Stretch Desktop so that you can see the differences in the processes and the differences of what you get because what you're seeing here in the light version is where you end up. And if you want to compare it to the desktop version, if you're not familiar with the differences between the two, you can definitely check out that video and see how that installs and what that gives you in the end. So with that, I'm going to end this now because there doesn't need to be any more said, at least at this point. Thank you for watching. Check out the other Linux videos and the other Raspberry Pi videos I have. I made a playlist for Raspberry Pi. You can definitely subscribe to that if you're more if you're definitely interested in finding out more about them. I will talk to you guys later. See ya.